Hello again. This is the third of the um, the, the uh, series of podcasts that looks at the early years of the Nazi Party, nineteen nineteen um, to twenty four. Um, this um, podcast focuses in on the third strand, which is Hitler taking control in the year nineteen twenty. So zooming in there, so you can see the key features that we're going to cover: Hitler actually becoming leader of the party the stormtroopers, and a few words about the Nazi 25-point programme. Okay, so first of all, Hitler becomes leader of the party. Um, Now, Hitler joined the party, remember, in 1919, and in 1920 the name of the party changed to the name, as it always was, the National Socialist German Workers' Party. But in those first two years, Hitler was merely member number seven. He wasn't actually leader of the party. The party was led by um, two people, um, uh, um, a man called Anton Drexler and another man called Karl Harrer. Um, They were uh, the chairman of the party. Um, Now, what does chairman mean? It basically means that decisions are made by committee and by voting. The chair chairs a discussion and the leaders of the party sit around the table and they vote about what the decision should be. Now, Hitler... Um, in 1921, um, suddenly threw, threw out onto the table um, a pretty radical um, demand. He, he, he insisted that the way the party was running itself um, was hypocritical, that the party was guilty of double standards. Basically, um, what did the party stand for? It stood for the fact they hated the government in Berlin. They hated the system um, that Germany had become now that Germany was a republic on, on, on the system was a, democra- a democratic system. In other words, um, it was a bottom-up system. It was um, decision-making from below through Parliament. Laws were made by discussion and by voting. And the Nazis passionately believed that that system was wrong because it led to involving too many people in government. Um, the Nazis believed that it should be one person running Germany, it should be a dictatorship, and also that Parliament slowed down decision-making because everything had to be discussed. And so Hitler said, look, how are we running our own party? We're basically got double standards here, we are running it um, in a democratic way, and, and that's everything we hate about, about Germany. So he insisted that we... That, that the party be reorganised with a single leader who makes the decision. No discussion, no debate, a single leader. Um, now, because Hitler had become such an um, a important member of the party, um, its membership was largely, it had grown enormously, and you see the figures there, uh, from 6,000 to 50,000. Um, uh, effectively, he... he, he I suppose it almost had a tantrum. He threw, threw his, his dummy on the table and said, "I will leave this party unless you make me the absolute leader." And um, Harrer and Drexler, the the leaders, re- really had no choice. So Hitler became an absolute leader. Okay, all decisions now will be made by him, and it was run the way like like, like a, a military system, um, which is of course a lesson Hitler learned when he was in the war. Um, and so uh, Germany became, or the party um, effectively was run in a, in a dictatorship way. Now, the title Hitler took was Führer. Um, it has actually got two dots over the U, um, and I'm allowed to remember that. Um, and that was the title he would always use um, as leader of the party. And the, later, when he became leader of Germany, he, he took that name with him as, when he became leader of Germany. But that's a, a, a later story. Okay, so um, its startling growth, the, the growth of the party was largely due to Hitler's use of propaganda and his powerful speeches. We've said that, but something else we haven't really spoken about so far was this group here, the SA. Okay, that's um, uh, an abbreviation of the German word Sturmabteilung, which translates as stormtroopers. Okay, um, or brown shirts because they wore discarded. Um, uh, army uh, uniforms from World War I soldiers who fought in the desert of North Africa. Um, and the stormtroopers, the SA, the brown shirts, were the party's private army. Now, really remember that one. They were soldiers. Okay, Do not get con- that confused with another group, who we will talk about at a later stage, called
called the SS, who wore black shirts, who were the party police. Okay, the SA were soldiers; they were a private army. Now, remember, in, in, in these early days, um, Hitler's intention was ultimately um, to seize power using violence by marching um, 400 miles to the north and overthrowing the government in Berlin. So, the SA were the were the main instrument. Um, of, of Hitler's plan um, as a new young politician to take power violently. He, did, he was not a, a normal politician. At this stage, the Nazis were a revolutionary group that wanted to seize power violently. They didn't believe in getting involved in elections or anything that, like that at this particular stage. So there's the information. There's the word stormtroopers, brown shirts. Make sure you learn the name of the leader of the um, stormtroopers was Ernst Rome. Okay. Um, so they were a very violent group. They 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 they, um, they they were out on the streets. They made it very difficult for political opponents to um, camp to, to 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 campaign and to win support for their own ideas. So they mainly disrupted the meetings of political opponents, in particular the communists, and were very much known as being violent. Um, typical stormtroopers were were ex Freikorps, they were ex-soldiers from World War One, um, who couldn't fit into normal peacetime life. Um, a huge um, proportion of them had criminal records, violent sort of sociopaths, etc. Um, finally, a quick word about the 25-point programme. We mentioned that last time. Uh, this was the party programme. It was designed to appeal to as many people as possible. Okay. So it had both right-wing and left-wing points. Now remember, we, we, we've, we've looked at the political spectrum. Uh, right-wing points were nationalist, and you can very much see the nationalist points in there. Okay, so um, attacking the Weimar government for signing the Treaty of Versailles. Um, very much against the communists, against the socialists, against anything that was left-wing. Um, and also, we'll do this in more detail, they were against the Jews. This is the first sign where we see um, that the Nazis hated Jewish people. Um, but also, in the 25-point programme, you will see left-wing points. Now, again, don't let yourself get confused by this. Um, it does not mean the Nazis were left-wing. Remember, left-wing ideas um, were mainly um, ideas that were um, supported by the working classes. But the Nazis were not a left-wing political party. So they put in left-wing messages like we will take from the rich businessmen and share profits and give to the workers, etc. Um, we will um, nationalise, that means the government will take up ownership of big companies so we can redistribute wealth from the rich to the poor. It put things like that in there. But the, the, the only reason Hitler did that was to, to try to win the supporters away from the Communist Party, to try to win their vote um, away. Hitler never seriously intended to do any of those things. Um, it was just simply a ruse. It was a ploy to win them over to his ideas. But Hitler was never really, it was never really a serious left-wing politician. In fact, those put points very much embarrassed Hitler. Um, he had to be very careful um, that when he spoke about those points, that he, he, he did, did that only in meetings with working classes. And, and often when he was with the middle classes and campaigning for the support of the rich, he would completely um, not mention any of these left-wing points. There's the factual test, as before. Pause the podcast, have a go, um, and then go to the next slide, which gives you the answers. Okay, so there, there are the answers. So that's the end of this um, third podcast in the series. Um, uh, if you move on to the next podcast, podcast four looks at the 1923 crisis. Thank you.